Hello to everyone watching this footage. It's Leviathan here again. And to start things off, I'm going to introduce myself to newcomers. I'm born high-functioning autistic, I'm obsessed with fiction, and I'm planning to make my own creative universe like the late Stan Lee did. This might be a bit of a different thing than I was doing recently. Instead of introducing three characters and such, I will be... Um, Introducing a new storyline. And if you don't know some of the characters, then I recommend you could check out the previous ones that will explain the characters that are mentioned in this video as many of them as I can for the time being and such. I'll try to make this storyline that I introduce as satisfying as possible in terms of quality and such. And if I ever start hesitating or anything like that, I apologize. Just please forgive me about all that. And if you guys bear with me, I'll introduce the story to you. It's only like two pages long, so it shouldn't be that much of a concern. Here it is. The Occurrence. Created and copyrighted by Levi Corsi Ames. December 28, 2020. To start things off, we start observing the New York City of the default Earth until we see a male office worker having a hard time with his boss, who turns out to be a hopeless stereotype. Mitchell, you have to stop being all sloppy with your penmanship. But boss, I have a thumb shorter than my other. I can't hold a pen very well with my left hand. Enough with the excuses, you freak. You are a failure in everybody's eyes. You're fired. You hear me? But at that moment, from some unknown cause, the boss sees his perspective stretched to the beyond as everything turned green. Sir, are you okay? The employee asked. The boss just sat there trembling all over and soiling himself as he stared into the unknown. With his left hand, the, box, the boss grabbed a letter opener and slit his face to bits until planting it deep into his damaged throat. As the boss's body fell to the desk dead, the employee got horrified and tried to run. But at that moment, some unknown occurrence made him as still as everybody else on the floor. With a tear in his eye, he turned around, walked behind his boss's corpse, and somersaulted out the window, falling to the gridlock streets in a morbid splat. Back in Blader Tech Tower, Madame Shear was building a plasma cannon the size of a bus when her computer system, Maya, told her, Sir, we seem to have another problem. Who is it this time? Sheer responded in irritation. I'm afraid it's not a who, sir, but a what, and I'm unable to scan the threat. You see, just in the past half hour, people around the world were losing control and performing mass suicides from an unknown psychological source. And Maya enabled some monitors showing worldwide. We see people setting themselves ablaze, damaging power stations getting mutilated by random animals, and people slitting their vitals left and right. Shocked of all this, Sheer laid silent until getting an emergency call from the Blue Man Clan Sky Carrier. On board the Sky Carrier, the Master was dealing with her employees as they got affected by who knows what. The employees were damaging the thrusters and generators needed to keep the Sky Carrier lifted. In urgency, the Master shouted to Sheer, What in Tartarus is going on around here? You tell me. Something's going around the entire planet and everything went haywire. We've got to find out what's going on before... And Sheer stopped, 
as she realized that thousands of people were splashing from the tips of all the buildings in the city. It appeared like something was directing them to do so. Suddenly, the Sky Carrier crash landed just a few blocks away from the city itself, leaving only damage caused by the shock wave of the impact. When Cheer got transported to the wreckage, she meets up with the Master as they find a few sensory deprivation chambers still intact and occupied. Did any of you guys get hurt? The Master asked. No. What do you mean? One of the female employees stated. The surviving employees then saw what just went down. What the shark happened? She asked. I just wanted some peace and quiet, and the city was left in ruins? Wow. Then Madame Shear had a shocking revelation. I think I know what's going on, she exclaimed to the master. Whenever someone gets strong emotions, they go berserk and kill themselves. Whether it be anger, fear, or pure joy or stress, it would kick in and they lose it and everything went down as a chain reaction. And all of this happened across the world in just a half hour, the master stated. I think I know something that would help you guys. And they all turned to the employee. While I was in the deprivation chamber, I heard the sound of happy and healthy nature all around me. And I heard a woman humming a pleasant tune and laughing to herself. I also saw what I think is a huge river. That's all I could recall, she finished. And she explained, according to those descriptions, I think I know where to look. It might have started in the Amazon rainforest. When Sheer, the master, and the employee traveled to the Amazon via Maya's transporters, they found that all the wildlife was nonchalant about what was going down in the world. The animals are unaffected, the master noticed. How can that be? As they walk through the boggy environments of the rainforest, they start hearing a woman humming a tune. That's the humming I heard the employee realized. When they pushed the ferns out of the way, they saw, they saw a woman relaxing in a small segment of the river. She had luscious red hair, green skin, and seemed to be more plant than human. When she turned to the three, she batted her tiger-like eyes and smiled her red lips as she greeted them with a vine-like tongue. Hello, children, she said with a smile. What made you decide to visit the domain of Mother Nature? She asked with pride. Your Mother Nature? The employee asked. I sure am. And let me ask again if you don't mind. Why have you come? Annoyed. She has started. There's something going on that's making people kill themselves across the world. Do you have anything to do with this? Hearing the message, Mother Nature stared at the three with developing irritation in her eyes. Of course, she admitted. I was seeing how disgraceful humanity was to my health, and to help balance the planet's life, I decided I should correct those flaws. You see, I amplified all the plants in atmosphere that would make all humanoids end themselves out of fear or rage. I had to do it because I love the life on this globe, and I cannot let it go desolate. Losing it, Madame Shear jumped into the water and placed her fingers around Mother Nature's throat. Stop this tyranny. It's not healthy, Shear stated. Please don't do this, child. If I die, the entire planet will perish and become unsustainable. Well, Mother Nature... You think what you're doing was right for the planet, huh? 
and Mother Nature sighed in grief and stated, Okay, I will stop the occurrence, but you have to promise me this. If anybody starts hurting me again, I'm switching it back on, okay? And the master replied, We cannot promise that it'll truly stop, but we will make sure of it. It's a deal, Mother Nature promised. And the three left the scene back to New York, leaving Mother Nature to relax on the organic waters of the river. Eventually, the master and the Blue Man Clan rebuilt the Sky Carrier, using a specialized reconstruction beam to repair all the places in the world. Then Reaper, an incarnation of mortality, brought all the victims of the occurrence back from the dead in order to restore the balancing scales of the cosmos. Afterwards, everybody made extra sure to stay healthier to, for the planet. But one day, a careless late 20s man decided to litter at a local park. And the next thing we knew, he just stood there, paralyzed, as he stared deep into the infinite unknown. The end. Well, guys, I hope that storyline was refreshing from the uh, recent videos I've been making. The reason why I've been doing the data sheets more often than the stories is because to keep you guys from being confused with the characters, I want you to get an understanding of the characters in and of themselves. And I hope this storyline and the attempts I've made for the quality is satisfactory for you guys, especially for all you people who are watching this down in the United Kingdom, which thank you for uh, the furthest span that I've got for my creations. Thanks to you, all of you, to be honest. And if you guys want, you could like, subscribe, and comment down below. It's your choice. You don't have to. It's all on you guys. I hope you guys have a fine rest of the week and such. And until next time, in transmission.